Uh, welcome, everybody. My name is Jackie Yasky. I'm a, a program leader uh, of the undergraduate social work program at the University of Greenwich. I'm a social worker myself, and my background is in children and families and fostering as well. So this presentation is to talk you through the key roles that a children and family social work uh, have and, the, the, and the, the support that that they can provide to to children and young people and the, 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 and, the uh, and, and and the support the, the support that 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 is that, that they offer as well okay uh, next slide next slide so uh, the role of children's services is to ensure that children reach their, 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 their fullest potential, to ensure that families have the appropriate support in place, that children's needs are, are consistently met, to, to identify and manage risks with, that could impact on the welfare of children, and also they have a role to safeguard uh, a child, children and young, young people from harm. And I think it's worth stating from the onset that the role of a children and family social work is to keep, keep, keep families together, and that uh, if a child is removed, that is at the last resort. So the whole aim uh, when I was a, was a children and family social worker was to, was to work with a family, to put, to put in support, resources, to try and maintain the child, child within, within that particular household. And a removal of a child, child was, was actually the last resort. And uh, in terms of law, was in, term, in terms of the, the legal framework as well, the Children Act 1989 states that the, that wherever possible, a child is best placed to, to, to remain within their home. So, uh, so to, it's important important to dispel the myth that as a social worker we walk in at, walk in at, and remove a child. That is an, is in fact illegal. We can't do that. There needs to be enough evidence, there needs to be evidence of that we've worked in partnership with, with the family and that uh, the, 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 the option to remove the child is the last, is the ultimate last resort. Okay, next slide please. So uh, the first uh, step level uh, in relation to children and families uh, services is what's known as early intervention services. So I've listed here about uh, what they do. Uh, and it's about supporting families so, so that a child remains uh, within within the family the family home. They can offer parenting programs to, so to support a parent or parents to better parent uh, their children. So looking th things around beha behavior management, looking at uh, um, things around um, you know the particular uh, uh, the child development stages, to uh, and play and uh, therapy and those kind of things as well. So uh, looking at support around drugs and alcohol use. So uh, where uh, a parent or parents are using drugs and it potentially could have an impact on that child. The early intervention services offer support around, uh, the, around a parent being, being able to parent their child whilst either using the drugs or uh, working, working towards being able to reduce, reduce the, the, the level of drug, drug, the, the level of drug use. So, and also they offer support around, around additional, additional uh, impacts in the home. So things around domestic abuse, uh, debt, uh, and whether there's issues about, uh, and, um, uh, there's, there's issues around the home, about uh, whether there's a risk of the, of the fam family being evicted. That's what the, the early intervention services are there for. And they support the families by doing prevention work. So as I said, the parenting programs is, is an example of that. And also if, if as a parent, you have any parenting concerns, if there's any issues around say finance as well, that may be impacting on your ability to parent your child, then the early intervention services are, 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 are available to offer support within that. Okay, next slide, please. So how do children's services work? So uh, when a child, when children become involved with your child and so, 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 when children's services become involved with your child and family, as I've mentioned earlier, there are laws and guidance from the government about about what they should do and what they can't do. Uh, and then there's a concept known as known as significant harm. So uh, and there's a particular threshold, uh, uh, and 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 if and if a, a case or a situation reaches that that threshold. So, uh, so before we get to that point, if we've not been able to work in partnership with 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 the with the family, 
if there have been uh, there hasn't been any progress or any improvement in in the family situation if if an individual is um uh, is, is, is is not able is, is reluctant to engage with with, with, with with the local authority and you know as a, as a, as a local authority we will feel we'll feel that because of this lack of engagement and because of the the, the uh, family the family not engaging with, with, with the local authority then we feel that the child is at risk of significant harm at that point then then we, we would then look to uh, to go down the legal route to try and safeguard and 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 ensure the child the child the child the child is or children are, are, are safe okay uh, next slide please so uh, this diagram explains the ways that children's services can be, become involved with children, children and families. So the first bit uh, usually look, looks at universal services. So those services would include school, health visitor and GP. And, uh, uh, and those services are available to all children uh, in the UK. Then we have move on to early help and, and I've explained uh, uh, what uh, support uh, uh, that, that is available to, uh, in relation to early help. Then there's a child in need. So if a child is disabled, or uh, they are, um, they have any kind of particular, um, uh, they have issues around education, uh, and they, they have an, 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 an education and healthcare plan, then that child will be classed as a child in need. And then the next layer stage would be uh, child protection where we would look at doing an investigation to find out what, what the circumstances are in relation to that particular child, where, where we receive the referral, where there have been concerns expressed about uh, um, the, 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 the way that child has been parented, whether they've been left alone uh, and so on. And uh, in the child protection stage, we would put in support and services and be able to meet with the, with the parent to explain uh, the referral that, that we received. Um, and then in within that child protection context, um, we would also do some investigations. So in liaise with the Edward school, the child's at school, with the health visitor, with the GP to get, to get a full picture around uh, uh, what's going on for that child or young person. And uh, within that ch child protection uh, um, forum, we would uh, carry out an assessment and then look to have a child protection conference where the 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 key uh, the key organisations and 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 services that are involved with that child would attend, so you'd have a health visitor, police, and the local authority and the school would and the and the parents would be invited to attend that meeting as well. Most most importantly, and uh, and the, then the, then that meeting is chaired by a, 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 by a, an experienced social worker, so a chair a, a chair of the child protection conference. And uh, once they've, they've heard all the evidence and, and outlined all the concerns that um, have, been, have been raised by various organisations that have been working with the family, then at that point, the, the chair of the panel, chair of the conference father, would then decide whether the child is, is a sub subject to a child protection plan. So in that context, they, they would, they would be, then receive further support from the local authority. There, 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 there'd be uh, frequent uh, visits to, to the family to check on the progress uh, and, all, and, and then if uh, the progress is, is uh, the concerns are reduced, then we'd have another uh, case conference to remove that to, 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 to remove that child in relation to the child protection plan and in which case they would, they'd become a child in need. So you can see there that the kind of level of concern reduces from uh, child protection to child in need. However, if there are situations where the child is at significant is risk of significant harm, as I mentioned, then we would then go to, to, to the pre-proceeding stage and stage and ultimately would go to court to, to, to obtain an order to safeguard uh, and to protect that child. So generally speaking, we tend to work around early help, child in need and child protection. So where um, and, and so and so and so um, if, if where, where there's a situation where we've tried early help, we've tried child in need and child protection, and yet the concerns still persist and there's no improvement, at that point we'd then look to look to, to issue what's known, known as, as pre proceedings. So we'll be informing the local authority will be informing the family that we're going to court to safeguard the welfare of that child because. The family that their family have not been engaging engaging with, 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 with the local authority. They've not, not been attending appointments. There's been no progress in the child's 
uh, welfare and the concerns of increasing, that's that's the point at which we could go. We would go down the, the pre proceedings route, and potentially that could lead to the child being removed. But as you can see from this diagram, that is the last resort, and, and, and it's not not the first resort. Okay. So next slide, please. So uh, when can social services remove a child? So as I said, um, they can with your consent. So uh, sometimes we have situations where family or a parent is saying that uh, they need uh, some respite, they need a, a break because of um, you know particular situations that that's going on for, for them as as, a, as, a, as an individual. And uh, so one way that a child could be removed from, from your care would be if you if if you if you as, as a parent agreed for this to happen. So this, this needs to be for a time limited period. And it may be that the child then lives with, with a family member, a friend, or, 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 or is placed in foster care. And and uh, and and uh, the, 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 this, this is referred to as a section 20 agreement. So, as I said, you know, th this is for a time limit limited period. It's not a, an open ended arrangement. It could be for a month. It could be for six weeks or whatever. But uh, the, the aim of that is, is that at the end of the six weeks, the child will then come back into your care. And you would also share parental responsibility with between you, you, you would remain as, as the parent. So if the foster carer or the family member they wanted to do, wanted to obtain any medical treatment for that child, they would need, need to get you get your consent as the parent of that child. OK, and then the second point is, is, is if, as, as I said in the previous slide, if you went to court to uh, seek a court order to remove that child. OK, next slide, please. Uh, so and, and then and then and then another option uh, in relation to removing a child would be what's known as a police protection order. So there are sometimes there are incidents, serious incidents occur because it's not possible to obtain a court order because the court is closed or it's the weekend. And so then the local authority can ask the police to exercise their protective powers to move a child from their family. So sometimes, in my experience, if a child has been uh, left a home on a home on their own. And, uh, and and uh, the police uh, find out this that, that this happened that that this, that this has occurred rather, they would uh, try and find where the parents are, uh, or uh, or a relative. And if that's not possible, then the child child will be taken into police protection order. So, but he taken into police protection. And uh, this uh, that order only lasts for seventy two hours. So it's a very short term uh, uh, order. Um, and uh, if the local authority believe that the child must be, must remain out of care, so if there are, uh, are serious concerns about the child's welfare, then the local authority, authority can apply for a court order before the 72 hours expires. So with a police protection order, the, uh, the police would then contact the local authority to request that, that this child is placed in foster care for, for 72 hours. OK, so within that, I mean, this doesn't happen very often. It's generally speaking where, say, for example, there's the, 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 the neighbor, the, a neighbor has, 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 has been in touch with, say, the NSPCC or, or whatever to say that, that they're, they're hearing a child has been, you know, crying in, in, a, in a flat by themselves or whatever. And so then the police will then come round and discover that child, that child is there by themselves. And they, they, they would, they, the, the police can, can then apply for a police protection order. OK, uh, next slide, please. So uh, these are similar, similar to the previous slide that I showed you already. So we've talked about what universal services are. We've talked about uh, early help and the child in need. So and then in the red, as I just mentioned, these are kind of where it's very serious a situation where there's child protection pre-court pre proceedings and then court proceedings where a child could be removed into and placed either with a fa with a fa another family member or placed into care. Okay, so next slide, please. So uh, in terms of a child and family assessment, so uh, uh, in, in, in this assessment, so this is basically where 
um, where, where, where in, in relation to uh, where the local authority have been asked to carry out an assessment of, of the situation that's going on within that, within, with, with that child and their family. So uh, as I've said here, when carrying out the assessment, the social worker should look at all uh, elements that are impacting on that family and to, and to ensure that they respect uh, religious, religious and, and, and cultural, uh, uh, cultural needs and to view the parents as 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 and as an as 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 an an as as a person and look at the family structure the culture and so on and also to try and understand how the family operates what works well and looking at the strengths as well so it's not just about the the issues that are going going on with the family but also to to look at the strengths that exist within within that family and they'd work with the whole family to carry out the child and family assessment. And the social worker should, should, should listen to your views and share any relevant, relevant, relevant information with you. And they should work with you as, as the child's parent, uh, whether or not you have parental, parental responsibility. And uh, uh, the child and family, family assessment should be carried out within, I think it's, uh, no, it should be done by, within, uh, um, uh, is it uh, within, for, 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 for 45 days, that's when, when the child and family assessment should, should be completed by. Okay, next slide, please. So, when are you like, like, like to, to come into contact with children's services? So, as I've listed here, um, so you have a child who needs extra help or additional support. So, for example, if, if your child is disabled, that, 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 that then you can approach uh, the local authority to get additional support. So whether that could mean uh, perhaps uh, some respite care for the child to, to, to give you, you and the child a break, or whether it's looking at maybe to get, getting some uh, therapy as in speech, speech and language therapy, or whether it's to look, look, look to get some, some uh, um, uh, adaptations to the home to ensure that the child child can can, can is able to 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 remain within the home and 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 to, and to walk about within the home or whether you need to get some disabled access those are the kind of things that uh, that's the kind of situation where 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 where, where um, you, you could uh, reach out to uh, the local authority. Uh, a second situation is where your child situation has been investigated and the child, child protection procedures. Um, and as I said before, they may have suffered significant harm or may be at risk of suffering significant harm. So by that, I mean that they're not safe or being well cared for. Or uh, finally, where you're not able to look after your child um, and you want to, you know, you, you're saying that you want the child to, be, to live elsewhere or where a social worker thinks that you're not able to look after your child for, for various reasons. But as I said, um, the first, uh, the first uh, uh, focus would be on trying to work with the family to keep the child at home. <coughs> Don't automatically go in, go in and, and remove that child. Okay, next slide, please. Similarly, it may be that, uh, and so, so uh, a parent or another family member or an older child, so the child themselves may, be, may request family support services. So maybe you've got a teenager, who is, who, is, who, is, who is experiencing some, some, some difficulties at home and uh, they can then contact the local authority to request some family support. Um, uh, and it also may be that uh, a, a professional who knows the family, so such, such as I said here, a teacher or a GP can make that request on their behalf. And depending on where you're, on, on how your local authority is structured, they either have a neighbourhood based social worker or a multi agency assessment team. So sometimes it's referred to us as the MASH team or referral and assessment team. And uh, in the multi agency safeguarding hub, that's what the MASH stands for, they will offer a further assessment or immediate support to, a, to, a, to an individual, or they may signpost you to sort of community based support. Uh, and, and, and look, look, look at uh, look at whether there's any support support within the voluntary sector to be able to support that particular situation. Okay, next slide, please. So, uh, so that's the end of my presentation, and I've just put put there some uh, useful websites to give you some more information about 
uh, about uh, support that, that, that you can get in relation to children and family social work. Family rights group as well, I mean, they have, have quite a lot of extensive uh, information about, uh, they talk in more detail about the Child Protection Conference process, so they talk about the court, the court going to court, and your rights as a parent as well. So, so that that's a, that's a, a, a very uh, that's a, that's a, a helpful web website as well. Okay, next slide. So, and that's it. So, if you've got got any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me. Thank you very much, Jackie. That was excellent. Thank you very much. There's a lot of information in the yes, short a short time there. there. Yeah, Thank but you. it's definitely given me an insight into the basic structure of social services uh, and what's available. Thank you. I, I know that a lot of people have concerns because of the high profile cases in, in mm -hmm. social work. Mm -hmm. For those people that don't have any, they have sort of uneasy or un unconfident in the so social service system, what would you say to them? Well, yes, I mean, the, the only things that come to light uh, in terms of the media are the, the cases where we haven't been successful or where a child has died ultimately. But, um, you know, there are, like, for example, as I, as I showed in the slide, where, where a child who is disabled, and I mean, I used to work in a respite scare, care scheme for, for children who were disabled, and my role was to match the, the ch children to, 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 to the foster carers, uh, to, to, give them, uh, uh, to, to give the children uh, uh, some, some ex uh, uh, regular respite. So again, that's nothing to do with moving, moving children or whatever. Sure. So, so the, 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 ch the children would go there on, on a monthly basis. They'd spend the weekend with the foster carer. The foster carer, they, 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 they are approved by the local authority and uh, they, 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 would, they would receive training around to, to manage the child's uh, uh, their, 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 their additional health needs. And, you know, and, and, you know uh, when I was in the respite care scheme, a lot, lot of these um, arrangements were, were long-standing. They went on for a number of years. So uh, and the foster carers would receive a payment for that as well, and so, and so and so that's the bit that you don't hear about. So there may similarly there may be um, a, a young person who is probably may may be at risk of of, of being exploited, and uh, so uh, um, and so the local authority would be involved in kind of you know to 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 uh, talk to that young person, support them, guide them, and also to to work work with the school. To ensure that that, that that child the child the child remains uh, with, with, remains in, in a safe environment, so you know the 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 whole uh, ethos of children's services is very broad, and you know as I said at the beginning of my answer that you only hear about you know the bad stuff you don't hear about the good stuff that goes on, and also we work with unaccompanied asylum seeking children, offering them uh, uh, foster placement. You know, helping them with, with their, to, to 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 safeguard their their um, their their immigration status as well. That is uh, so. As a, as a, as, a, as a social worker, I was involved involved in that as well. So so that a child could could remain in the UK. If I can tap into your experience, you know, working with fostering. Yeah. Slightly moving away off subject, but a lot of our clients uh, are LGBT. Mm -hmm. They're all HIV positive. Um, some of us have got drug, drug histories, mm -hmm. some, of us, some of us are single, mm -hmm. but we're seeing a lot of LGBT parenting coming to the fore and, and yes. society is finally realising actually gay people can be good parents too. Absolutely. If, if people have got sort of, sort of a bit of a checkered past, they've been involved with jobs or they've had mental health problems mm -hmm. historically, mm -hmm. or they're single, would they, or LGBT, HIV, would these people be eligible to to foster? And if not, what are the, the criteria? Just for anyone watching this that might be interested in becoming a parent themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, um, the guidance has changed. And I mean, I know in my day, years ago, there was a kind of almost like a bar on on uh, on uh, an, an LGBT uh, foster carers or adopters as well, because you have to bring an introduction as well. Whereas now, you know, um, anybody can be become a foster carer or, or an adopter. I mean, in, and it shouldn't it shouldn't be an issue because you have a history. We all have a lived history. I mean, the thing that uh, as a social worker, I'll be, I'll be wanting to find out from you is the kind of learning that you've, you've taken from that particular experience um, and, and how then you'll be able to, to then support a child who potentially they may be, you know, as they get older, perhaps they, they want to, you know, to go, go down that route and, and you can then talk about your own experience mm. of, you know, uh, of, of, of using of using drugs, abusing al alcohol and mental health issues. And, and, and also with, within the, um, the fostering uh, arena, 
you'd need to undergo an assessment and you need to have a medical as well. And, you know, the, and, and also the local authority would have their own medical advisor who would see the report, the medical report that's been uh, written about you. Um, and then they would be assured that, you know, there are no concerns about your, 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 about, about your, your ability to foster. So, so I mean, you know, go, go on, sorry. So, so that, so that the, um, that medical examination, that basically a snapshot of your mental and physical health on that day. And so regardless of the past, it's how yes. fit for parents yes. are on yes. that day. Yes, um, yeah. I mean, it's looking at you on, on, on the day, but also your medical history as well, because you have, you have to complete a form yourself as well, as well. And at that point you would declare that, but you know, if it happened twenty odd years ago and there's been nothing since, that shouldn't that that shouldn't be a problem at all. And again, you know, we 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 you know, there are children come from different backgrounds. You know, they may have had a, a parents who 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 have who have used drugs, and then and and then you know, you would have a better understanding mm. to be able to parent that child. Or, or you know, similarly, if a parent has had mental health issues. Um, and so they're not, and they've got to a point where they're not, not able to look after their child. You have that experience as well to, mm. to be able to, to empathize and understand the experience, the experience, experience that, 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 that parent has gone through. So yes, I mean, I wouldn't say that, that, that you should see it as a barrier. Absolutely not. That's very refreshing to I know Positive East, many other agencies, we recognize the importance of, and the value of lived experience. So it's very encouraging that whatever is in our past is really how we are today. Jackie, can I ask you, um, I know you're with men with families, but is social services just for kids or, or is it for any adult services available? And if so, who are they targeted at? And how many of our clients have got, got, have got issues with, with isolation, loneliness? There's just, you know, there's finding things difficult, especially during COVID. What services will be available to them? So yes, I mean, uh, as focused on children's services, because that's the brief, but yes, I mean, um, local, local authority social workers work with adults, work with older people. So they would look at uh, to providing support. So um, whether you, you need care services to go into your home, care is going into your home. Uh, if you needed to go to a day centre, you know, to help with isolation. Um, if you need, needed some financial assistance, as well, you know, they would look. They, they can offer you support around that. If you need, if you are an older person needing meals on wheels, then the local authority can organise that that service for you as well. It also, if you've got, um, you know, uh, issues around mental health, then you'd be allocated a mental health social worker in the community mental health team would be there to support you uh, and to look at, um, you know, yeah, uh, um, look at the medication if you're on medication or look at, you know, organising, uh, well, when things are better to organise kind of, you know, social events for you. So, so to, 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 um, to, to alleviate the isolation, if it's looking at employment as well, to, to help you to get back into employment. So things around, you know, CV writing, applying for jobs, uh, benefits, making sure you've got the right entitlements as well for benefits. So, you know, um, in terms of adults, uh, yes, absolutely. We, we, we do, we do work. Of big comprehensive service there. Yes, absolutely. Well, one more question, if I can, just to finish yes. off. Um, and then we'll see if any, any attendees have got any questions for you. Um, I forgot what it was. Bear with me. Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. So you were just talking about the support available for adults. If any of um, our clients want to access these services, how do they go about doing that? Do they need to refer up from a professional or can they do it themselves? They can self-refer, yes, yeah, so, they, so they can contact uh, the adult services and uh, they would um, take do, do, complete an, an initial referral form and do an initial assessment, uh, generally now it would be over the phone. Um, and uh, then uh, once that's been completed and if you meet their criteria, then uh, a social worker would come out and, and carry out an, uh, an assessment, a more fuller assessment as part of the Care Act 2014. And, and then after that assessment has been completed, then we would, they would then identify uh, what support uh, your, your, they, 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 can, they can provide to you. So yes, you can, can self-refer or you can be referred to by your GP. Or uh, if you if you're in hospital, for example, you may be involved with a hospital social worker. So and and, and also that they're looking at that at the discharge hospital discharge team. So so if you're if you're in hospital for whatever reason, maybe COVID, for example, God forbid. Um, mm -hmm. So then the hospital social worker team will be looking at what support services you have uh, you, you you would need before before you are you're discharged home. 
because you can't just be discharged without without any support. So, and they'll be asking you as the patient, you know, do you have any family or what support do you have already in place to be to be able to to, to be able to to, to to care for you? Whether, as I said, you need meals on wheels, you know, that kind of thing as well. Great, Jackie Yasky, Greenwich University. We're, we're out of time. Thank you so much for a really informative presentation. that's packed with loads of information and you've got details of how uh, you people can access um, this um, presentation will be on our on Positive East website and on our social media as well. Thank you very much indeed and I look forward to working with you very soon. Good night.